Any data we need is stored in the data option of the component's config object. This object key takes a function as its value. But in modern JavaScript, when the value is a function, we can use the shorthand syntax where the key becomes the function. The function returns an object where we store our data as key value pairs separated with a comma. Any time during the series, when we mention data properties, we're talking about the data returned here. Data binding is how we communicate between a component's template and script blocks. We can bind data in a few ways. The first is one-way binding from the script to the template. This is where data from the script block is output in the template with string interpolation or attribute binding. With string interpolation, we reference the data property in the template by wrapping it in two pairs of curly braces, known as mustache syntax. As an example, we'll add a data property called name with a value of John. In the template, we'll bind that name to the heading with double curly braces. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see the name in the heading. We can also use more complex data structures like arrays or objects. Object values are referenced with dot notation and arrays are referenced with the indexer. One thing to note though, is that we can only use string interpolation as a value inside an element. If we try to use it as an attribute value, Vue will convert it to a static string. To bind to an attribute, Vue gives us the vbind directive. We add the vbind keyword in front of the attribute we want to bind, with a semicolon separating them. Then we reference the data property as the attribute's value. As an example, let's say we have a link we want to bind to an href attribute. So, we do vbind and a colon in front of the href. As the value, we just reference the link data property. If we run the example and inspect the element in the browser's dev tools, we can see that the link works correctly. View allows us to bind to any attribute on an element. This includes attributes like ID, or style, as well as Boolean attributes, like, disabled. The difference between regular attributes and Boolean attributes is in how Vue renders the state. To demonstrate, let's say we have a Boolean data property called isDisabled. isDisabled is bound to the disabled property of a button element. If we run the example, the button will show a disabled state in the browser. And, when we inspect the element in the browser's dev tools, we can see that view has added the disabled property. Now, let's change is disabled to false. If we go back to the browser, the button will be enabled. And, in the dev tools, we can see that the disabled property has been removed completely. So, in the case of Boolean attributes, where their existence implies a true value, the attribute will not be included in the render. Because vbind is used so frequently, the Vue team has created a shorthand syntax for it. We omit the keyword and just use the colon followed by the attribute. To demonstrate, we'll remove the keyword from the binding in the button. If we save and take a look in the browser, everything still works as it did before. In some cases, we may need to output data that includes HTML tags. We can't do that with string interpolation because Vue converts any special characters into web-safe ones. So, the Vue team decided to make a dedicated vHTML directive to allow HTML characters. To use it, we specify the vHTML keyword on an element and reference a data property that contains the raw HTML we want to output. Vue will access the element's inner HTML behind the scenes and add our data. As an example, let's output a simple message with raw HTML into a paragraph element in the template. Vue won't convert the HTML to a static string, and the text on the page will show as bold. We can also tell Vue to skip compilation on an element that doesn't contain any Vue directives by using the vpre directive. Essentially, it's the opposite of vHTML. To use it, all we have to do is attach the vpre directive to the element we want to skip compilation for. It doesn't expect any value or expression. 
As an example, let's say we're creating a tutorial that shows the user how to use mustache syntax. We want to render the double curly braces in one element, but also render the normal behavior in another. We can just add bpre to the element where we want to show the curly braces. If we run the example in the browser, the first paragraph will show the curly braces. It's worth it to note that Vue doesn't render the vpre content in an HTML pre-tag. It just skips compilation of the element so that it's rendered as text. In the next video, we'll learn how regular and arrow functions work in Vue. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.